people. Ooh. Welcome back to Brent Durand Underwater. As you probably saw with that intro, today we're gonna to talk about what's in my Save a Camera Kit. It's an inside look, it's a secret scoop, it's a snoop -a doop mm -hmm. I don't know what it is, but we're gonna take a look and see exactly what I'm carrying in my Save a Camera Kit. When I go diving, whether it's a local beach dive for the day or a local dive boat or a long international trip, now this is what I use to fix my camera, my housing, what I've used on numerous, numerous other housings from photo workshop guests, and also for tinkering and coming up with new ideas and new tweaks and adjustments and cleaning all the gear. So stay tuned, let's dive in. I'm gonna just go through these items one by one so you can see exactly what I'm carrying and maybe create a kit like this yourself. Okay, are you ready? Let's do this. If you have any questions, put questions in the comments below. I've also tried to include links to a lot of this gear online. So if you wanna pick up something similar, go ahead, click those links in the video description and you can find all of that gear. So without any further pause, what I keep my kit in is an old Tupperware box. Now, I believe deli meat came in this from a camping trip. So instead of going, spending a lot of money, just try and find something that's sturdy, that will hold your, your kit in a nice, safe fashion. Now the plastic's also waterproof and held together by masking tape. Real simple, same tape, strap on and off, and it seems to get the job done. Going down the line, I always keep microfiber cloths. Now these are good for cleaning the inside of dome ports, for cleaning inside out of your macro port, all your lenses, all that sort of thing, really good. Also your um, laptop screen. So carry some of these. I will also carry a number of high quality paper towels. Now it's essential to use high quality because low quality when you're cleaning your O-ring grooves or little pieces on your housing will leave little filaments and, and little pieces of lint behind. So it needs to be high quality paper towel. And I use this to clean my housing grooves instead of Q-tips. Now everyone will have a different method. High quality paper towels work for me. I also keep a number of different lubricants. Make sure that you have lubricants and o-ring grease for the different types of brands of equipment you have. Try and pick up a type of o-ring grease or something that you know is compatible and will work with your gear. Note that not all o-ring grease will work on all o-rings. Some will cause others to deteriorate. So look into that, make sure you have all the o-ring grease you need for your trip. I always carry some desiccants, always a good idea, especially if you're shooting with a smaller housing like a compact or a smartphone housing carry some of those. Clips. Now I carry this in case I ever find myself hand holding something. I've got a wrist strap. I've got a little clip here for emergencies, a little key ring in case I, I need to carry something there. And of course a clip. Sometimes I'll carry a number of these because you just never know when you need to clip something off. Stainless steel is way better, but for double the price, um, it's a lot of money. I'd rather get the brass ones and every you know 100 dives or so they start not working, just replace it at that point. No problem. Here's something interesting, sensor cleaning. So this is a dry sensor cleaner. It's basically a little stick with gum on the end, or gum, um, a gummy surface that I can use to clean my camera sensor. Now, one note of caution on that is you can ruin your whole trip if you touch your sensor and you don't know what you're doing. So really, really be cautious about any sort of sensor cleaning. Try and get someone with more experience um, help to help you out if you're not quite sure how to do that or what to do. But I will use this on the camera mirrors as well as the sensors if they do happen to get dust. Honestly, I haven't used it in years because if you change your lenses quickly on a dive trip where you're not in a dusty condition, you don't need to really clean your sensor all that much. Sometimes there have been oil leaks and stuff like that years ago with different cameras. Anyways, I digress, let's continue. Batteries, look at every type of battery you're using. Your dive computer, your console, your housing leak detect system, anything like that, try and find the batteries or make sure you find the batteries and carry some extra because you know that your dive computer battery will show low as soon as you get to your destination, even though it didn't before. So, you know, one, always make sure your stuff is prepped, ready to go, but two, carry the batteries because you never know when you'll need them. I'm gonna start setting stuff over here. I think that should be okay. All right, I've got a little multi-tool here. Now this is useful because it's got a screwdriver in it, it's got little pliers in it, a small little knife blade. So I find this useful for all sorts of little things. You can only imagine what you will do here. Um, carry one, make sure you never take this carry on. The little blade, mm, nope, TSA is going to take it. Have lost one, not fun. 
What else? We have Allen wrenches. So make sure you have Allen wrenches for your system. I have Imperial and metric based on different housings, cameras, and stuff like that for me and for guests. So I'll carry two kits. Notice they're very small. I've tried to find ones that are most weight efficient possible. Now you could go so far as to take out certain Allen keys and I've done that before to save weight, but for the most part, I keep these in the kit and it's all pretty similar. We have a little bit of tape. Sometimes you just need to tape the, the heck out of something just to keep it attached. So I'll bring tape. I have some of these chargers. Now these are for American plugs where you have a three prong adapter. So two for power, one for ground. And you're using it somewhere like in the Philippines that may have a lot of two prong adapters. This takes the three, turns it into two. They're fairly cheap. What I did discover the other day is that these very, very cheap ones from a number of years ago, I bought um, maybe five, six, seven years ago, um, have now been replaced by better ones that are fire resistant materials and less prone to, to fire outbreak. Now you should always watch everything that's charging, never charge anything overnight. Um, but these better plugs are a little more expensive. I believe they were $1.50 to $2 US, but for that kind of safety, I'm 100% behind it and have switched from these older style to this new style. We have a little Phillips screwdriver. This is good for compact camera systems when you're attaching trays and arms and things like that. Never know when you need a screwdriver. Extra fiber optic cable. That's for triggering my strobes. I always keep a number of backups because you never know when you'll break two in a row and it's good to have this for you or for a buddy who might break a fiber optic cable. I have oops, another battery here. I'm gonna skip some of the miscellaneous pieces for the scuba equipment. Um, here we go. Now this is a fiber bristle brush and as you twist the bristles will come out of the little pen and screwdriver. You can see it right here. But basically this is really good if you have brass contacts that get in contact with salt water. So think about a strobe that floods or the battery compartment that floods. You can go in here and brush it off. Um, also insides of housing if you or someone you know heaven forbid has a flood, you can go in there and kind of brush off, clean some of those contacts. Even on a battery charger or something topside that people drip salt water onto in a dive boat, you know, this will get some of that corrosion off, which is really useful, versatile to have, just a few bucks. Some needle nose pliers, also essential. This is good for putting C-clips on the pins of, of housing buttons or any number of other things. Anything that's small, it's really helpful to have these needle nose. Very light, don't take up much space. Here we go, some Loctite blue, useful for locking down threads on stuff you don't want coming undone. Use that quite a bit. Miscellaneous O-ring, not sure what that's for. We have a strobe battery cover for my CNC strobes. So I'm using that. That is in case uh, I do have a battery compartment flood. So you want to use a brand new one if you do flood the battery compartment. So I carry one with me. We have an M16 cap. This is for a, a Nauticam M16 mount. So I picked this up for um, a gear review at a certain point and I keep that, just a good thing to have around. Never know when you might need that if someone doesn't want to use an accessory like a vacuum valve or something that goes in an M16 port. I've got some hardware for keeping cameras on trays. Also some of these spare ultralight control systems, clamp spacers, which actually tend to work really well to be the separated from wing nuts from your tray into your compact housing. So good to have a few of these around. I also keep a number of these uh, O-ring cleaners. They're basically like uh, makeup remover type things. So those stay in the kit. Number of miscellaneous O-rings in here. Um, some C-clips as well. You never know when you're pulling out a pin of a housing, bing, C-clip goes. Never gonna find it again. So hard, spent so much time looking. Carry extras. Always zip ties, zip ties, zip ties, zip ties all day long, every day. We have some more O-ring grease and I should probably put that in this because that way it's all together. And like I said before, more clips. I've got another brass clip, zip ties, more little clips and key rings. I use these a lot, especially in reviewing gear. Sometimes all of a sudden I'm slinging two different camera systems or whatever it is on the same dive. I wanna lock stuff off. I wanna clip it off. Extra lights, if you're doing side-by-side -side tests of lights, how are you gonna carry all of those? You know, you can clip them off and all of a sudden have a nice little accessory system here. And then that's pretty much it. So hopefully that's useful for you guys. Again, if you have questions, leave them below. 
Hopefully you will build your own kit like this. Now you could have a kit for your local dives and a kit for international travel that's a lot more pared down. It's up to you. I tend to have a more robust kit because I try to prepare for working with workshop guests. I have seen others who have a lot more and larger kits than I do, like soldering for electronics and stuff like that, which is far more than I'll try to take on a trip. But anyways, find something that works for you, figure out what you've used on trips, find lightweight versions, small versions that are very easy to pack, and then you're good to go. Thanks for watching, I'm Brent Durand, I'll see you in the next video.